welcome to episode 369. Nice. <laughs> nice. Of the award winning Fergo and the Freak podcast. I'm the Black from Rugby League Project, Andrew Ferguson. You can find me on Twitter at AndrewRLP. And join me as always is a glorious League Freak, who you can also find on Twitter at League Freak. How you going there, mate? I'm going pretty good, Andrew, the real deal, Ferguson. How are you doing? Not too bad. You know what? In a in a moment of uh, the universe being all nice and parallel, mm-hmm. just looking at my phone and uh, the battery percentage, 69%. Nice. I kid you not, 69%. Nice. 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 I was actually searching online before. Yep. Sexual position 69. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> subtlety just went out the window yeah yeah now, speaking well, of nice the 69 position let me just describe it nah go on let's go <laughs> speaking of nice yes we've got a nice episode here for our our devoted fans we and do I know it's they... been a while because um we've both had our dramas yep well not really we just couldn't be fucked um but we're, we're back we just had a little break that's all it was yeah but Christmas and everything. It got busy. It did get busy. Yeah. But uh, we're here now for mm-hmm. possibly the most important podcast episode, not just for us, but for all podcasts in the entire podcasting world for the year, and that is the King of Rugby League Awards. The number one rugby league awards on planet Earth, um, yeah. all encompassing. Every single level of rugby league is involved. There's no picking and choosing. The goalposts don't move, and it's not just picked by a bunch of balding old men in northern England, and that's the main thing. Yeah, and uh, we might even have a little cherry at the end for something that we've decided we're going to do as well. Yes. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's not a, it's, there isn't a long list of awards like you do get at most of award shows. Yeah, this isn't like the Olympics swimming where it's like medals rain like confetti. No, no, no. This is very specific, mm-hmm. very clear, just a handful of awards. You're either good enough or you're shit. Yes, exact. That's it. That's what it comes down to. So yeah. we'll go from from bottom to top, okay? All right. Now, now, the biggest story in rugby league this year, we went through a number of them. There was obviously the competition, the NRL competition, moving completely to, Brisbane, uh, to Queensland, Brisbane yep. hosting the grand final. We had uh, the Redcliffe Dolphins coming in 2023. Yeah. The the World Cup being rightfully postponed during the middle of a global pandemic. A um, whole lot of big stories, but I don't think, and you, you brought this up really, the biggest story by far. And we had to go by the amount of outrage. Yeah, because it was outrageous. This has never happened before in the history of sport. I believe. I looked it up. I Googled it. The Penrith Panthers dismantling the Premiership Trophy. Well, dismantle's a a gentle word. I've never seen so much... They crashed it. I just have never seen so much disrespect shown to a giant, heavy piece of brass in my life. Have they even got the thing repaired? Are all the pieces back? back? I'm assuming it's just like a piece of Lego that's been dropped from a million stories up. It's just bits and pieces everywhere. Well, that's what the story was made out. It was, yeah. It was screwed back together really quickly. Apparently, it had, there was an old weld or something that had broken from it, and it was previously broken by a different team. But that was the Panthers' fault. Facts. Mate, we're not here for facts. I know. We're here for hyperbole. Yep. And we're here for outrage. Yeah. And these and young Panthers, disrespectful little shits. Yes. They destroyed this trophy. We'll never see it again. We're going to have to make a brand new trophy. Exactly. Who's going to be the new trophy? Well, yeah, who would be on the new trophy? You know what it should be? Mm. It should be something to commemorate the current premiers, Mm -hmm. but not the current team because they're disrespectful assholes. So maybe... maybe Justin Pascoe. No, no, no. We we don't want to. We want people who want to want to, you know, win. We we want them to aspire to win this thing. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was thinking, I was thinking, Mark Guyer holding up, um, Roycey Simmons after he scored the second try in the '91 Grand Final. Hey, I'd be all for that. That would be fucking awesome. How good would that be? 
if that's not one of the most iconic images in rugby league, I don't know what is. What would be an, another one that would be um, Benji's flick? Benji's flick pass, yeah. Um, oh. What else? Have we got a question from the audience? We do. What is it, there? Yes, I am going to work tomorrow. Are you going to sleep now? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Important commentary there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought her contribution was good, though. I mean, let's be honest, I'm not going to top it. <laughs> no, no, I feel like... Uh, she We're just passengers here now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that was the biggest story in rugby league, apparently, this year, if you go by the media. Um, and we couldn't go past that, really, could we? It's it's hard to go past. I mean, I think we actually dedicated an episode to it, didn't we? So it must yeah. have been important. Yeah, yeah. If we talked about it, it was important, definitely. Yeah, now, right. the Representative Player of the Year, okay, is a big award. There's some organisations yeah. don't take into account all representative football, namely the International Rugby League. Um, we're not like them. We actually value all rugby league at all levels. Exactly. And by, by the rep- all teams. Yeah, exactly. They're all rugby league players. I, I would like you to announce the representative player of the year, Andrew. <laughs> this is not through a fear of not being able to uh, pronounce the name properly, is it? No, no. I, I, I can my, announce, my guess is it's yours. I can announce the name properly, right? But I just think that the backing it up is what counts, and we have backed this one up 100%. All right. We're going with Ukrainian 5'8", Alexander Skorbark. This bloke is, let's be honest, and, and this is serious. We're not, we're, not, we're not mucking around on this one like we did with the last one a little bit. This is genuine. He's mm. a point-scoring fucking weapon. Okay, so he played two games this year for the Ukraine. His first game, you know, both these games were in October. Um, he scored four tries and 12 goals against Russia, 40 points in their 96-18 win. Win, that, that's a gentle word. It was a destruction of Russia. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he kicked just a subtle three goals against Serbia uh, three days later. Uh, this bloke is an absolute point-scoring weapon. It's not the first time he's, he's dished up a, a big load of points either. Back in 2010, he scored three tries and 12 goals against Latvia and a 112 to nil win there by the Ukraine. Crazy. Crazy. Man, just, he just eats, sleeps, scores points. Yeah, and just couldn't go past him. Like, no. al- almost breaks the all-time international record held by held by Braith and Astor. Um Exactly. Sensational, absolutely sensational. Representative player of the year, easy. It's not, it wasn't even close. Nah, he's nailed it. Now, team of the year. We had one team penciled in for this. We were pretty certain about it, but then we remembered an, another incredible achievement by another team. That's right. We've gone to um, – Oh, look, look, let's be honest. We were first looking at the two top teams in the NRL this year, and that was the Melbourne Storm, who just, I mean, they they were scoring points very freely. Um, And the Penrith Panthers, who were basically unbeatable for most of the year, other than when they played the West Tigers at one time. (laughs) I mean, they were full strength. strength, (laughs) Yeah. Let's be honest. Um, But, yeah, um, we couldn't. We couldn't overlook one team who scored points better than both and defended better than both all year, and that was Toulouse over in the um, second division, the championship over in England. Um, they played 14 games in championship this year, won all 14, scored 698 points at 49.86 per game, conceded 124 at just 8.86 points per game. So they had a average margin every week of 41 points. That's margin. Mm. Insane, and obviously crazy. got promoted to Super League as well. So now we've got two French teams in the Super League. It's the best that's ever looked over there in England in the Super League. They've actually got two teams that aren't along a highway. 
Yeah, all I need is a few more French teams, and it'll be really interesting. Yeah, um, probably ten more would be brilliant. Ah, oh, how good would that be? <laughs> it'd be cool. It'd be cool too, because then they would have teams, uh, a lot of teams in in uh, Super League that aren't afraid to travel overseas to take on good opponents. But we won't talk about St. Helens. Um, now, the Rookie of the Year. This yeah, we put. We had two names that stood out for us. But the one that won this award was basically the guy that was in the worst position and still looked great. Yeah, so we're, we're looking at, uh, obviously, Sam Walker. Mm. Had, a, had a brilliant start to the season. Kind of got thrown in to the deep end when Kiri got injured um, and was seamless stepping into the role. Mm-hmm. But a few weeks later, we had uh, the emergence of Reese Walsh. Essentially, what this come down to is the fact that, given the amount of absolute top quality, top line star superstars are on the Roosters side, it would be easier to look impressive in that team than it would be to look impressive in the Warriors side. Yeah. Um, furthermore, he let's go with pushed the iconic Roger Tuivasa-Sheck to the wing, and didn't look out of place doing it. Yeah, well, and and the thing is too, like the he comes into the side late, he hits the ground running. RTS is like, you know what? I know I'm on a million bucks a year. I know that, but I'm going to play on the wing. Let this rookie take over the fullback role in a team which really needs a fullback. And Walsh handled it all, and I that was just so impressive. Uh, it could have been a situation where. It was a young bloke that had heaps of talent that was set up for failure, and he didn't fail. And I just thought that that was amazing. Yeah. Furthermore, I mean, two of us went went and signed a contract with Rugby Union and and left early to go and prepare for it. Yeah. Yeah. Such as so, his confidence in in Walsh's ability, which is I think that's a pretty telling uh, factor right there. Yep. It was uh, a great season by him. And they, you know, you can build it. They can start building the team around him, which is fantastic. And he's still so young too. Him and Walker are very, very young. But and Walker, yeah, I feel. He's got, I, sorry. Oh, you go, you go. I was going to say, I felt sorry for Walker because he got bashed out of the game towards the second half of the year. Um, yeah, bit of a slight frame. Yeah, yeah. So, but he'll be right. He'll fill out. Um, but yeah, say, was, let's not forget too that Reese Walsh. Has those gorgeous eyes too. Well, they're dreamy. They're absolutely dreamy. And they can't go but, past them. That's just sex on face, that is. <laughs> Funny, because I was looking that up. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, the big nice. Award, nice. The big award. Nice. The big award. Our, our current king of rugby league is James Tedesco. He's been the king of rugby league. 2019 and 2020. Not too many players have gone back to back. Not too many players have won multiple times. Um, so James Tedesco is the current king. But in 2021, and we did debate this, and we uh, double checked. Yeah, we, we, I was gonna say we had it down to two. Mm-hmm. But the king of rugby, the king of rugby league, in 2021, is Nathan Cleary. It's my boy. Yeah. Yes. Now, we should explain why. Yes. So um, I had Tom Trebojevic and Nathan Clear as the as the top two that it should be between. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Based on uh, Trebojevic, the amount of improvement he provided manly when he came back from, from injury was unparalleled almost from, from what I've seen in recent times. Not just you know, how much he improved Manly, but also the form he had. The bloke was just untouchable. But as we uh, as we debated, um, and look, I won't say fists were thrown. No. We got knives out. We got knives out. Well, I mean, that, that's our starting yeah. point. <laughs> we always get knives out. Our yeah. knives are out right now. That's right. That, that's just the start of the negotiations. Um, <laughs> as, as you very... Very well put. Um, you've got to be able to back it up when it matters most. And Tom was unable to to, to produce those um, 
stunning performances in the finals when it really mattered. Mm. And that's the only deciding factor, to be honest. And we're talking about like one or two games. That's how yeah. close it is, really. Yeah, it, it's uh, damn, they were both good this year. So, so good. And, you know, Nathan, I think they were, they were neck and neck all season and then Nathan Cleary got injured. And when he come back, he needed a couple of games to get into it. And you sort of, sort of thought, oh, Tom Trebojevic in front at this point. Mm. And then we come into the finals. Tom Trebojevic was really not a factor, unfortunately. And the Panthers play this grind of games where the key player was Nathan Cleary in every single one of these games. And he ends up winning the Clive Churchill medal as well. And it, it's just really hard to argue against that, I think. Like no, I get, agree. Yeah, yeah. And it's, look, even if, if Tom Travojevic had had a couple of good games in the finals, he he probably would have won it, you know? Yeah. But the, the last month of the season is what really, 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 really matters. And... It's and then when you throw in the fact that like in Origin Trebojevic was outstanding, but in in Origin remember that game that second game I think it was Nathan Cleary was doing some we were, we were watching him and being like oh man he's doing some Andrew John stuff he's doing that next level stuff um it, 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 they were two outstanding players and you can't really pick a wrong pick between them. But we kind no. of went with Nathan because he, you know, the final series, he was the key player in it all up. Yeah, yeah that's pretty much the deciding factor. Um, yeah, definitely well deserved, though. That's the thing. A lot of players will struggle to back up after losing a grand final. Mm. Um, but Cleary generally did take his game to the next level. Um, so much so that you, you, it makes you wonder how long this Panther side can stay at the very top of the game. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, it, you know, to have a halfback like him and like, I know he got a, a shoulder injury, but outside of that, he's been pretty robust to touch wood physically. Um, he, it, you know, and I mean, can you imagine if he just imp- if he improves again next year, that would be ridiculous. Yeah. I look. All he's got to do is pretty much just hit a plateau now and just stay at the exact same level he is as his absolute worst. Yeah. And Penrith will be fine. They'll be a top four side nearly every year till he decides yeah. to stop being so good. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It's been a crazy year as a Panthers fan watching all this happen. Um, so, yeah, King of Rugby League, Nathan Cleary. There we go. See, we didn't waste your time. No. Nah. Damn. <laughs> now, we were going to announce too that um, I think our, our was it our representative player of the year. Yes, we also we've also decided because we're experts mm-hmm. and we're probably more important that um, Alexander Scorbark will be the Golden Boot Player of the Year. Yeah, the best player in international rugby league. International Rugby League was played this year and he was the outstanding performer in International Rugby League. And there's no reason for Alexander Scorbach to not have won that award. He was the best player. He, he What he did was extraordinary. And International Rugby League was played. You don't need to have certain teams play International Rugby League for it to count. Every team exactly. is important. You know, and, and we acknowledge that even if the International Rugby League and certain rags in the UK cannot. This is what I don't get is for some reason, the International Rugby League decided that they weren't going to be awarding the Golden Boot this year. Mm-hmm. Last year, you could probably say, you know what? We might we might be able to let you off on that one because there was only one, essentially one official test match played. Mm-hmm. Um, still... We went and decided who should be the best player in that game. Anyway, that should be the golden boot. Um, and I'm, I stand by that. But so there was two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's 11 full internationals played this year. Mm. 11. Mm. What, you can't give a golden boot with 11 games? 
it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And it just showed the contempt that certain people have for international rugby league when it doesn't involve the teams that they actually care about. Um, I, th- I thought it was gross. I thought it was really gross. Yeah, and it's just because it wasn't there wasn't enough games played by some teams they feel deserve to be there more often. I mean, there, there's this. I think what's happened is the, the international rugby league are stuck between the rule they put in place mm. and, and what the rules used to be. So the rules used to be had to be regarded as the genuinely the best player in the game. Yeah. That's fine. And then they changed it to the best performances in international games for the year. So you didn't even have to be the best international player, just have the best performances in international games for the year. And they're stuck between the two because they want to give it to the best possible player. But if the best possible players aren't playing, then they feel like we can't give it out at all. So they're trying to stick to the old rule and not the new one that they created, which is just confusing and stupid. Yeah, and, and look, even going by the rules, how they change them all the time, then they go and pick somebody that goes against those rules completely, and you're like, it, that's why that award has no credibility. Um, And then for them to just decide, oh, no, we're just not giving it this year, I think that says everything about that award and why no one takes it seriously, you know? Um, I, wonder, I wonder if they'd have dished it out if England had to beat France 80-2. to two. Oh, 100%. 100%. And that's the thing that's, that's irritating because you know that if England had played maybe one more international or had been more dominant against France, they probably would have given it out to someone from England. Yeah, and we know how it would have played out. They would have given it to someone from England and it would they would have said, well, he's the best player in the world. Only English people, okay? He's the best player in the world. And the rest of the rugby league playing world would have gone, yeah, he is, yeah, whatever. And then the English would have gone, oh, fucking Australians. Because right? that's what they do. They're so obsessed with this. Fucking Australians. Fucking. Uh. And then Australians would have said, no, let us make the case for it. And then they would have, the Poms would have dug their heels in and said, no, this fucking guy was the best player in the world. You'd have to fucking deal with it. Stop whinging and stuff. Well, they just didn't even bother doing that. And. Nah. You know, uh, it, that's why there's zero credibility there. I mean, it's like the decision to to postpone the World Cup. You know, the, it come to the New Zealand Rugby League and Australian Rugby League had to say, look, we can't play a World Cup during the middle of a pandemic. And wasn't that the right decision at the end of the day? Well, yeah, because the, um, the Wallabies that went and did a tour of England ended up having COVID go through their camp mm-hmm. while they were in England. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a bit embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, there's talk that the the next the world next World Cup after this one could be played solely in France. I hear. I hope so. I really hope so. France deserves it. Um, they're one of the teams that are moving forward. Uh, one of the nations, I should say, that are moving forward in rugby league. And we need to stop giving the World Cup to nations where rugby league is regressing. Uh, I hear you on that one. Yeah. Do you yeah, agree? So, I agree, yeah. Yeah. It's the, why, I, would, why would we do that? The, the World Cup should always be something we use as both a celebration of rugby league globally mm-hmm. and also a promotional tool. Yeah. Okay, and playing playing the World Cup in England and Australia is pointless. We don't need to promote the game in either country because, I mean, it's been used immensely number of times in England in, in the last two decades. Yeah, and provided zero. Yeah, the game's the game gone. Game's gone backwards there. there. We're, and, we're basically giving blood transfusions and, to a dismembered corpse when we take the game to England. <laughs> well, that's right. And over here, yeah, I mean, we, we're growing the game in Australia without the World Cup. Mm-hmm. Like when the World Cup comes over here, it's a bit disappointing because people are sort of like, yeah, you know, we've been watching rugby league at, you know, the elite level all year. It's cricket season now. Mm. And they switch off. Yeah. Uh, um, 
and that's not the right environment for for the Rugby League World Cup either. So there's no point bringing it here. No. So, you know, take it to places where they need that growth. Like New Zealand will get behind it immensely. Um, Papua New Guinea, USA, France, take it to these countries. Help take it to some of these countries that are coming into a World Cup for the first time. Let them play some games at home in their first ever World Cup, like Greece, Jamaica. Mm. You know, try and think of ways to include them and let them play a World Cup game at home and watch the people flock to it. That's yeah. how you promote the gaming and get that constant passion for it, you know, ingrained in the game. You know, constantly taking the thing to England and Australia all the time does nothing for these other nations. No. does nothing for them. It's and the only reason why they do it, obviously, is because TV writes money and that sort of stuff. But you know what? Get better at selling the game. You don't need you don't need that. Uh, you don't need to rely so heavily on the Australian media or the the English media money. Mm-hmm. So you do. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, speaking of international rugby league, I know what happened um, since our last episode is the ranking list came out. World ranking. Oh, wasn't that great? The, the the international rugby league rankings list where we all know how that works as well. Like there's, there's, yeah. na- there's nations that can win everything and then they have a little bit of a, a misstep and they get destroyed for it. And then there's other nations who can barely win games and it never affects them. Yes. Now I, I took a screenshot of the top four. Yes. When it first came out, and I said, this is pretty much a joke. And everyone thought I was defending Australia. I said nothing about Australia. I just said it's a joke. And what I said was a joke is the fact that England are above Tonga and Australia, and Australia is now fourth. And if you were to look at that and go with, based on what the international teams they field right now are, mm-hmm. there's no way that Tonga and Australia are beneath New Zealand and England. No. 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 I'd have Tonga and Australia, I don't care what order, above New Zealand and England, and I'd have New Zealand at three, England at four, at the absolute best, if that's who the top four have to be. Yeah, and it's... It's it's hard to argue that when the the last time the British played against Papua New Guinea, they lost. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, It's absolutely ridiculous. And... My question was, who are these rankings for? Because in rugby league, people look at those rankings and know that they're a joke. So it's not for rugby league people. It's not for people that know the game. Casual fans know it's a joke. And so it's not just even for casual fans. And if you are not a rugby league fan and you don't really care about the game, you don't care about these rankings anyway. You don't give a shit. So who are they for? You know, and, and that's that's the question that I would like somebody to answer, because we all know if England's not better than bloody Samoa, England's not better than Fiji, England's not better than Australia, but like we know this. So who are these who are these rankings for? And we also know that England can be terrible, and they never seem to drop down the list ever, 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 and. Australia can – Australia's lost two of their last 17 games. I looked it up. Two of 17? Yeah. What the hell, like, are they supposed to do? It's ridiculous. And when was the last time Australia lost to England and or Great Britain? And it's got to be back a while, hasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's been ages now. Uh, what would the last time have been? I'll have to have a look here. Maybe 19, uh, 2006, maybe? The last time Australia lost to England in an official test was the, I guess that's the 1995 World Cup. Oh, England. Uh, yeah, the opening of that. England. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been that. And the last time they lost to Great Britain uh, is 2006. Yeah. And that was 23 to 12. 15 yeah. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it makes no 15 sense. 15 years ago. One, two, three. They've only lost to England and Great Britain four times since 
1994. Yeah. It was the second test of 1994. And look, I, I've got no problems with if you, if you play the number one team. So if you say Australia is basically the best team in rugby league and Tonga, Tonga beats them and there's no, we've talked about this before, there's no asterisk next to that. You know, it was Australia's best no. and Tonga's best and Tonga won. And if Tonga is then placed number one, even if they'd lost the previous five games against Australia or whatever, I've got no problems with that. To be the best, you've got to beat the best. It, it, but that's not happening. <laughs> that's not happening. No. I mean, Tonga beat Australia and Great Britain in, in 2019. Mm-hmm. And that was as the invitational side. But apparently they've made it clear that those, those count towards Tonga's official stats. Mm-hmm. Um, Tonga lost to New Zealand in 2019. Mm-hmm. They lost to Australia in 2018. They beat Samoa. They lost to England and um, somewhat controversially, some might say, in the uh, finals of the World Cup in 2017. Yeah. That was after they won five straight games. It was a screw job. Fiji, Scotland, Samoa, New Zealand, and Lebanon. Mm-hmm. So, I, I'm fine with, with Tonga being as high as they are. And the thing is, Tonga's gone up very quickly, um, and rightfully so, given all the success they've had in recent years. Mm. But Australia's dropped pretty quickly, given that they've had, essentially, because they haven't played any test matches for two years. That's pretty much what they're regarding it as. Mm. And because England has continued playing games... Um, but, well, but here's the thing: played they ha- one, they one official match in two years. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like because that's what they were saying. They were saying, "Well, if you don't play international rugby league, you're going to fall down the list." And I looked, and it's like, well, England doesn't play that often. So what is that all about? Yeah, yeah. Prior to the game against France, the last time they played an international was exactly the same time Australia last played one. Yeah, which is 2019. Um. So it's it's crazy to see see it the way it is. I was just looking at the the way they determine it here. They've got it on the International Rugby League website. Mm-hmm. There's points are awarded to each team for each match based on the result of the match, win, lose, or draw, the margin of victory or defeat, the larger the winning margin, the greater the value to the rankings, the relative strength of opposition face. If you play a higher ranked team that is of greater value than playing a lower ranked team, um, recency bias. So um, more recent matches are weighted more heavily, resulting in the most recent uses worth double or three years ago and four times the result, and that is four years old, whatever it is. The importance of the match, World Cup matches are ranked higher, followed in order by World Cup qualifiers, regional championships, and then one-off international matches. The points are then used to create the official rankings by ordering the teams by virtue of the points gained over the four-year period. Only officially sanctioned games are played at senior level between two Approved members are considered as part of the rankings. I just don't see. I don't see how England ends up in the second place when they hardly ever play. You know, their their recent game was a, but they barely beat France. You know, I, I watched that game. They they really struggled to beat France, and then I mean, it's been you know decades since they beat Australia. It just makes no sense. Yeah. No sense whatsoever. It's a bit, it's a bit dubious. If you, it, like in the world yeah, rankings. I'm going to go the, to, to, Sorry. Hey, by the way, you might have to turn that fan off or down or something because I think it's kicking in your uh, uh, noise cancelling, so you're cutting in and out. Uh, there we go. I think that's what's I've happening. A, I've, I've knocked it back a few years. Okay. Yeah, let's see. I uh, will right. find out. <laughs> I'll stop it moving too. It's a bit of a moving target. Okay. Yeah, because the, the uh, look, the fourth ranked team has lost two of its last 17 games. So how good are the top three going? Exactly. It's I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to go through because mm. it is it's set on the website. It's based on the last four years. Mm. So I'm going to go through the last four years' worth of 
officially sanctioned international games. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll do a ladder. I won't go into the whole complications of who's played a higher ranked team and, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll just go on a ladder and come up with essentially who, who's got the best win percentage over that time and work from there. If, you know, if I want to get a bit fancy with, is, you know, quality of opposition, stuff like that. I'll try and work a way to do that. It's hard to do it because something like that requires some degree of bias. Mm-hmm. And I don't like adding bias because it's personal opinion. It creates, um, uh, let's see, points of, points of dissension, so to speak, where people can say, that's because you think they're better than they really are or we think my team's better than this because of this and blah, 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 blah. I, mm-hmm. I hate putting any form of bias in there because of that. So mm. if I can find a way around that and just keep it purely statistical results based and nothing else, then I'll do that. But yeah, I'll go through and put through the, the list of officially sanctioned inter- full internationals mm-hmm. as de- as determined by the International Rugby League. Um, and I can say this, I know which ones they are because I help them come, come up with a list. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll go through and sort that out, and I'll put it up on Twitter. But we'll also mention it in our next episode as well. We can discuss yeah. at a bit more length then. Yeah, yeah, because uh, see, like, see what we can find. And just do something that's really obvious and plain to see, because the what they've got now, I just don't know who they're meant to be for, and uh, you know, and uh, you know, the thing that you'll get is like. The, the, you'll get a few palms saying, oh, they're not meant to be for Australians. I'm like, they don't need to be for Australians. Like, I'm, why are New Zealand number one? I don't understand that. I, I don't understand how the fourth-ranked team has won so many games and is the current world champion, how the third-ranked team could have just beaten the world champion, and how the second-ranked team is only playing every so often and hasn't beaten, you know, the world champions, and, and they're no, it just makes no sense. Mm. Silly, silliness. Let's have a look at New Zealand since 2018. They they lost to England 36-18. Mm-hmm. They, they beat Australia 26-24 in 2018. Mm-hmm. They lost to England 16-18. They lost to England 14 to 20. They then beat England in the third test 34 nil. They beat Tonga 34-14. This is 2019. They lost to Australia 26 to four. They beat Great Britain 12-8. And then they beat Great Britain again, twenty three eight. It's not. It's like a fifty fifty win record. Yeah, it's not a good record. Like, what are they doing in no. number one? Well, it, it it's silly. It's just silly. You know, they they obviously the way they calculated is poor. This is why we should be playing World Cups every three years, by the way, because then the rankings don't matter. You just go by who has the trophy. Well, that's true too, yeah. Especially if they're going to do it every four years with the, the um, you know, with the rankings there. Mm. All it takes is for a World Cup to get scrapped for one year, and it mm. throws everything out of whack. Yeah, because that's essentially what's happened. Um, yeah. if you include included the 2017 World Cup in here, because the World Cup games are, ra- are ranked highest and heaviest mm. according to their website, right? That's what's cost Australia most dearly. It's not because they haven't played recently; it's because the World Cup games that are weighted the most are no longer included anymore mm-hmm. because they're outside of the last four years. Yeah. That's all it is. It's, uh, uh, you know, and it, it, obviously somebody tries to bring up that there's a problem with this, like they did with playing a World Cup in the middle of a pandemic, like they did in 2000 when there was a revolutionary new round rugby league ball introduced. And what do we get? We get bleating from people that are pasty faced and balding and, you know, self important dickheads. And guess which country <laughs> they're all from? Are you talking about England again? No, I didn't mention anyone. I can't believe you would say a country, Andrew. <laughs> just guessing, just guessing. Just guessing. Uh, ding, ding, That's ding. All it was. So, so what do we think about this year in rugby league? It's been a, a funny one. It's been, uh, there's been a, a, some changes which have been cool. It was cool to see Toulouse 
doing so well. Um, you know, I, the NRL season moving the way it did to Queensland was pretty cool that they got that to happen very quickly and that the, the grand finals played in Brisbane. It was always seen as some, if by the media, some earth shattering event that nothing will ever be the same if Queensland gets a grand final. And it was just a game that was played in Queensland and it didn't make it any more of a less of a grand final. Um, well, at least now we can say that Queensland has actually finally had a proper grand final because it yeah. replaced that shit fest they had in 97. That was such a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no one, no one that was horrible. That um, was just... Yeah, look, the the absurdity of the rule was dogged um, PVL all year to the point where he had to come out with a statement full of contradictions, mm-hmm. um, which did nothing to prove his point anywhere. And now it looks like there's a slight backing down of the rules about to take place to some degree, but not fully. Um, so that's that's some stupid shit we're going to deal with next year. So we'll see how that works out. But uh, yeah, yeah, the the rules they didn't they didn't make the game more even. They made it more lopsided than we've seen in a long time. Um, yeah. But apparently that's great for rugby league, and that made everyone happy. Yeah, apparently, apparently. And the TV ratings went down. And of course, because of that, we have a worse TV deal going forward, which uh, funnily enough, the the companies that paid less for the TV rights were saying this was the best TV rights deal the game's ever done. Uh, it's funny how Pretty that amazing, worked though. out. Yeah. But this is the worst year yeah. in terms of yeah. NRL footy I think I've seen since the touch football era of the very early 2000s. And I think that uh, I think that the Storms attacking records, like you look at that Storm side, and they did it. There's no taking away from that. But I think if you look at their lineup, their lineup I would not consider to be one of the best attacking sides I've ever seen. And I think that oh, I agree. We, weirdly enough, and this is the maybe why they won it, the Panthers being aren't so unbelievable in defence under these rules, it's probably the reason why they won it because I think that the Panthers defensively, uh, I, I'm willing to say they're the best defensive team I've ever seen. And um, it's weird that in a, a season where it's just all just attack and shit, that the best defensive team won it. Which is kind of like the universe finally working its way around and making things right. Yeah, it kind of is. Like the rugby league god said, you know, all of this other rubbish, we don't like this, but this team here, oh, they're pretty cool. <laughs> Let's not rip them off a second time round. Yeah. Not that we got ripped <laughs> not that we got ripped off last year. We just were crap last year in the grand final. <laughs> well, that's fair enough too, I guess. Yeah. Um so yeah, not much else going on. Um I can can reveal that the Rugby League Project, I've linked up with League Unlimited again, and we're going to be producing our second annual very shortly. Mm -hmm. Um, Piecing it together now, it should be available in the new year. Uh, So keep your eye out for that. It'll be for free, again, advertised up on the homepage on the Rugby League Project website, also on the League Unlimited website. Um, um, You'll also probably get, we might even make a sneak peek available for people on the Rugby League Project Patreon. So if you want to check that out early, head over there and make a donation of as little as one dollar per month and you'll get a sneak peek a bit early that'd be very cool everyone should do that um one buck a month and, and while they're donating money on patreons i mean listen while they're donating money to patreons why don't they go over to uh patreon.com slash league freak what can they do yeah over there? yeah creating uh rugby league content since i guess you could i mean it depends should i would I say from the very beginning, my first rugby league website was 1997. Yeah, uh, that's, but, that's the very beginning. Yeah, but, but you know, yeah, I guess you can say since 1997 and doing the, the podcast and the website and stuff. I have had a bit of a break over the last couple of weeks, but, you know, it, it'll ramps up pretty quickly in the new year. So, um, so, yeah, but when you get your annual out, We'll do an episode about it because that'll be really cool. 
and we can go through the annual. Absolutely. We'll do heaps of spoiler alerts for the annual. Let's do that. Sounds great. We can do that. Um, you, know, you know what we could do? We could do a mm. episode which is just like the the audio book version where you go through and you just like round one, Sydney Roosters versus. <laughs> oh, no. Because we've got every, the match reports for every game. That could take a while. <laughs> yeah. Every single stat, every match report. I think that would be – I think that needs to happen. <laughs> so you'll read them all out? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't think people no. listen to my voice. Though. I must get someone with a, uh, a more alluring voice than mine. That's what they call a you issue, not a me issue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's the truth. <laughs> I'd be inclined to just make the, make the noise to let you know you've got to turn on the page. Dong. Yeah. Turn the page. I just say that and just copy paste that and repeat it. But yeah, that's uh, it's it's going to be bigger than last year's one too. Yeah, yeah, bigger, thicker. And the one for next year is going to be even bigger as well. Oh yeah, the one yeah, I, we're, I, we're I know not, the one for next year. Is we're not scaling this shit back. We're just going to get more and more. Yeah, yeah. It's your your computer is actually going to get heavier from the file. That's how big it's getting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's starting, it's starting to get a bit girthier already. Yeah, yeah. Like in that, Bulging at the seams. If it was any bigger, it would almost be as big as that special folder on your computer. You know the one. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Well, it's right, the end well, of the, uh, end of the year. How have, have you found this year? You, had a, you created a human being? Yeah, no. Another one, just to make sure, just to prove I could do it again. Like the first yeah. one wasn't a fluke. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's been a, been a pretty uh, crazy year. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I had, you know, sort of, I suppose what they call it, essential work and sort of stuff. So it meant that I had to go out amongst the COVID every single day in Victoria and mm-hmm. go to work to make sure people got fed. Um it's funny, everywhere you looked online, and there's always people talking about how difficult it was to be locked down at home all the time, which undoubtedly it was. Mm. But very, very rarely saw anything about the people actually still had to go out there. I think there's, I think there's a lot of assumptions that uh, um, people who had to go out and still go to work in essential services had it easy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that was that was rough. So the one thing that got me through it in all honesty was actually being able to record episodes on the podcast because it just sort of took me away from that, that worry all the time and doing something that felt normal uh, yeah. and was entertaining. So I've got to thank you for keeping wanting to keep doing the podcast all, all year and pushing through a lot of um, shit rules and stuff like that and wanting to keep talking about it. That was very, very good and very helpful. So thank you yeah. for that, mate. I, uh, I love doing it. It's good fun. The funny thing is that we, if we weren't recording the podcast, we, we'd literally be sitting here talking about the same stuff and probably for longer, like, because we end up going yeah. and doing some stupid geeky shit where, like, you know, I could see us, we'd start looking at Ukraine's rugby league results and, like, delving down into that and just doing all weird shit that doesn't make for great podcasts, but we, we geek out on anyway. Um but yeah, it's been a it's been a, a weird year. In some ways, it feels like it's gone for ages, and in other ways, it feels like it's sped by. And like what happened to it? Um, and footy wise, there was a lot to talk about. Uh, there was a lot of stuff we didn't like about this season. Um, but at the same time, like personally, the, the Panthers were. Uh, it's crazy. I still can't believe that they won it. And I went to the grand final parade with Nadine a number of weeks ago at Penrith footy stadium. That was awesome. Uh, Nadine actually sent me a Christmas gift and it had a Panthers membership cap for next year. Uh, and then a sticker and then a, a, um, what's it called? A keychain, a really nice keychain too. So I got to thank Nadine for that. She's been so lovely to me this year. You've been lovely to me this year. Um, uh, there's been some no, ups, was, and da- ups and downs say, and stuff. Can I say, she sent 
Do you know what she sent me for Christmas? What? Fucking nothing. Ah. Oh. That just proves I'm <laughs> just proves I'm a failure. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought it's been... I revealed that my daughter was going. It was swinging towards the Panthers. That she might have sent something down, but you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm just shit started. It's fine. <laughs> You're not, you know. I love you working there. I mean, yeah, the one thing she did give me, she, she took all the responsibilities of the Instagram account off my hands. Yeah, that's true. Because that was, that was a burden around my neck. I, I made I, like six posts in a year and a half. <laughs> it's funny. I see, I see the post she does on the Instagram and I'm like, damn, that's, that's great. That's awesome. That's better than my Instagram. Like, I, I look at it and be like, what's this cool post? Oh, that's from the podcast Instagram, you know? So she does great with that. But uh, but yeah, it's been a I was, overall. I, was say, you know? I look at it and I was gonna say, do you look at it and go, when the fuck did Andrew learn how to do that? <laughs> that doesn't look like it was made on paint. I I look at a lot of it and I go like, I I don't know how to do that. I don't, like I know she's got the app. I don't have the app on my phone. I know she's got the app on her phone, and I'm guessing it has way more features because I just don't know how she does some of the stuff on there. It's got me beat. Yeah, yeah. She's, like she's just got a knack for it. She does, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll just give her all the socials next year. We should, hey. Give her the – did we give her the Twitter account password? I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, I think, though, it sounds like we have a consensus, so we've already decided. So um, thanks, Nadine, for looking after our socials for next year. <laughs> just everything. Um, she could – we and kind of need of you to get cracking on the MySpace account, account too. That's That's been null. So uh, <laughs> if you can get that sorted out, that'd be sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the MySpace. We've got to ramp up our MySpace game. Which, you know what we should do? We should ramp up our YouTube game, hey? I was thinking... Uh, oh, yeah, big time. I've got some ideas for that, but I just... I, I've got ideas, and then I forget about them when we jump off, and then I think about them again when we're recording. That's the problem. You've got to write the shit down. I do. I really do. I need to get uh, a pencil and a bit of paper. Have have take notes. They, they don't. They don't exist anymore, mate. Just use your phone and use notes or whatever it is you got on there. That's right. They Absolutely. don't make paper and pen anymore. I've got my reminder, by the way, set for next year, sometime in November, about you. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be an episode onto its own. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be good. It'll be good. <laughs> when, was, when was it supposed to go off? 12 months time? Yeah, 12 months I set it for one year's time I think it's set for somewhere I don't even know where it's saved on my phone I know it's not in the calendar There's got to be a reminder I've got a feeling, we've got a feeling it's probably about 11, 11 and a half months to go now Yeah, something like that And so, so, far, it's, so far it's looking good for you <laughs> Yeah I know, right? <laughs> Okay, I found the reminders app. Hang on, it's loading up or something because I've never really used it except for when I continue. So it's set for – no, it's set for the 6th of the 12th. That's when we were last recording, okay, I guess. Yeah. And, and it, it was, wow, yeah. it took it down really well. It says – because I did it by voice. It says I told Andrew he needed a new computer and he's still fucking around with his old one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Just so people know, I've actually – um, the, the power supply on my computer has pretty much comped it. So I need to get a new computer. So what I've done is I've got my laptop and connected to a monitor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and this is going to work for almost a whole year, so you'll be right. Yeah, yeah. Now you can get yourself a new computer next year. It'll work. It'll be good. Sort that out. Um, all right, we'll, we'll put this one to bed. Um. Make sure you check us out on the socials, people. We're on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, MySpace, um, on Twitter and Instagram at Fergo Freak Pod. Give us a follow. Um, that bloke over there is League Freak. You can find him on Twitter at League Freak. I'm at Andrew RLP. Um, you can also go to our website, Freaking, and leave a comment. Yeah, it's FergoandTheFreak.com. You go to the comment section, uh, send us an email. I think we had a couple of emails that we didn't read out. I'll have to go back through and find them. Um, 
but yeah, I, I need to fix we'll up the, the commenting thing. Yeah, there's a there's a way to have it that it all comes up on the website, and it stopped working that way recently. I need to go back to that system, but I've got to get rid of that. We get so much spam. You've got no idea how much spam I get through the website. Lots of Russian stuff. Lots of uh, people in in the yeah, subcontinent that's... offering their services for SEO. All sorts of shit. Little do they know. Um, you know, that could just be another job for Nadine. Yeah, we'll get Nadine. She 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 definitely has a piece piece of paper and a pen. She can write this down. Yeah. So thanks, Nadine. <laughs> yes, thank you, Nadine. Um. <laughs> and uh, I suppose on that note, thanks for tuning in, everyone, for uh, for the year. Yeah, happy we've got some new ideas, year, everyone. Up. We've got some ideas coming up for next year too. Mm-hmm. I've recently come up with a good idea for our, um for some history episodes for next year, so uh, we'll we'll flash those out and see what comes of that as well, because that, that could be pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. And some other interesting developments might be coming around through to next year. So um, a few little tweaks and changes, but nothing major. But um, all all be revealed. Mm. That, that, is, is that enough of a a teaser? Did I do that for right? You know what we should. You, what you got to do is you got to worry some people, but make like, like I feel. I always wonder if people start thinking when we don't record for for a while. It's like, are they quitting the podcast? What's going on? You know, is, have they had a falling out or something? What's what the what's the deal? So you got yeah, to leave people. Four days. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, we we might be splitting up. up. Yeah, or we, we could not. be. We could be quitting, but we might not be. <laughs> yeah. We're not quitting. Fuck I don't that. think anyone's buying that one. Nah, nah. No, no, one's, no one's buying that. I just like that we piss off enough people that we're like, nah, we got to keep going. We got to make more people angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nothing better than people who rage listen. Uh, they're, they're, they're thanks they're to all the of our rage listeners. Yeah. yeah they're, they're the ones listening. that tune in first. Yeah. Fucking they're the most loyal and most devoted listeners we have. Mm. Thank you to our rage listeners, assholes. Fucking dickheads. Um, yeah. On that note. On that note, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Have a good new year, everybody. And uh, we'll catch you sometime next year. <laughs>